Now, why do we advance, especially I am going to talk in terms of a spine surgery, because we want a better outcome. Instrumentation can become more accurate. There is the ease of surgery. Minimize radiation to operating with staff and I think I have suffered from that because for 20 long years did not bother too much about radiation and now I must have had a whole brain radiation full dose accumulate and that is the cause of my forgetfulness Ajay. Uh, I blame it on spine surgery. Any technology must save time, it must decrease the tissue injury, it must shorten the hospitalization and you can get more and more complex surgery with more confidence. That's why you advance, but it comes at a cost. So because of this advancement, navigation first started. And you would have seen any, now in the present robotics also you have seen, there's a navigation system, which has a referencing system, where there's a dynamic reference frame, which is attached to the iliac crest or spinous process. And there is a another, The, the important thing about DRA is cannot be disturbed throughout the surgery and we would have seen if whoever has used navigation you have realized that due to some reason it moves the whole navigation goes for a 6 and then you start from the basic hence it is very important that you know you know the basics how to do surgery with a CR okay. It has a light emitting diode which is attached to the dynamic reference frame and you have a tracking system and there is again the diodes are attached to the operating instruments. Now, whoever has used this and I have used this, the company said it is wonderful, the surgeon thought it is shit because it really did not match in most of the time and we had a lot of trouble trying to get the tracking done. The registration were done by various systems, there is a various systems of registration like paired point registration where you manually match the known anatomical landmark, more points, more accuracy and that we do it with the brain navigation. That's why brain navigation is very, very accurate, very accurate. Then you have a surface matching pointer on a single point on bone surface, which happened in the second, third generation navigation, where you could put a point and you could say that this is where. And they are automatic registration. And now we are entering the zone of automatic registration. And this has been done because of the computerization, artificial intelligence, which has been going on for a long time. Now. In navigation, you require high resolution image. Problem is, pre-op, if you do a high resolution image and you are going to change the position of the patient while operating, everything goes for a 6. So, you have to understand that there is intersegmental mobility. How do we correct this? And you needed a manual intraoperative registration process. So, these were all stages where hurdles came and people had to overcome that hurdle. So there were various navigation processes, 2D fluoroscopy, 3D fluoroscopy, pre-operative CT, cone beam CT, intraoperative CT. And finally, we came to cone beam CT and intraoperative CT, which has uh, much more, uh, you know, uses more reliable, faster, can do much longer, even in the complex <coughs> spine process. But 2D fluoroscopy is still and will remain always because I have used every system and I have found my backup has always been a 2D fluoroscopy when I have not felt comfortable with the technology. Obviously, when you are going to go for a bigger and bigger stuff, you are going to get costlier things like you require a carbon table and carbon head clamp fixation. All those things will come into play. They all, but one thing is important that you require a real time imaging. So you can't go by the past imaging. The real time imaging must talk to the past imaging and give us the correct picture. That is very, very important. So in the spine, because it is a moving object, we needed a technology which identifies each vertebrae as that vertebrae. And that is where how the robotic came into picture. Now, robotic started in 2000s somewhere. And there was a, they found in the experiment there was a high level of accuracy and a highly consistent basis. However, there were cautions because the probe, because is a robotic assisted, the probe which you put or the for the marker which you put, it, it could just 
deviate from the pathway because of the soft tissue pressure which we have I have experienced. Forceful surgical application, it just bends and bony surface is skiving. What happened there, there was no online. You knew where to go, you were very accurate, but any deviation which created a problem. So you needed a better and better system to correct and everything I have faced, uh, it was difficult at times. However, there was a benefit, reduced radiation exposure to the operating staff. But remember, we are giving more radiation to the patient. Fortunately, patient gets once or twice in his lifetime and the doctor gets practically three, four times in a week. So that is a problem. But the evidence for this was weak evidence. Now, robotic spine surgeries are basically three types of robotic spine surgery. A telesurgical robotic system, a robotic assisted navigation, and a virtual augmented reality system. So telesurgical robotic system, you must have heard, I think most of the hospitals, big hospitals now, we have this. Da Vinci was the first to come. Now there are other systems which have come where the surgeon did not need to be on the operating table. It could be in the operating room or it could be even outside the operating room and cases have been done through the that system also being away from the operating area. Now, you could operate remotely. That's why it's known as telesurgical. But in spine, we don't use, as of now, we are not using telesurgical, but for users of Da Vinci, sometime for anterior spinal procedures, is telesurgical robotic system. Uh, in, sorry, I just want to say that Da Vinci has a, one of the best magnification and it reduces your tremor. Actually, the robot itself uh, controls the tremor. So, you can be have a lot of tremor, but in surgery, you will be look very, very precise. Come to robotic assisted navigation. Now, they employ the robotic guidance of the surgeon, operated instruments utilizing pre and intraoperative imaging in real time. And there is no robotic control over instrumentation. It has been originally used in the spine surgery for the placement of lumbar pedicle screw, but now the indications have gone according to the imagination of people. So the first one to come to the market was 2004. It was from an Israeli company, Major Robotic Limited, Spine Assist. In 2011, the second generation came, which was known as Renaissance. I have used Renaissance. Then 2016, Major X system came, and that is the time they sold the whole thing to Metronix. And Metronix already had OAM and navigation, stealth. So they married the two part, and then came the last one, which we are presently using in the world. Now, 2004, it was the first FDA approved and you had to fix to the spinous process of the patient. There was a um, uh, bar, a frame which had to be triangulated, fixed to the spinous process and posterior superior garlic spine and robot used to be placed on that. So you had to take the robot from the robotic machine which was also in renaissance, put it in a sterile thing and then try to attach it. That always scared me because that process of transferring from an unsterile to totally sterile area was not very scientifically designed. And the robot will evaluate and tell you where direction. You could plan it from beforehand and you could go according to that. However, the main limitation include necessity to employ pins fixed to a specific anatomical structure. And sometimes the curvature of the spine prevented the screw going because the bar used to come in the way. So, Renaissance was the second generation, came in to, uh, 2011. It was used for obviously pedicle screw uh, fixation, but also for biopsies and the typhoplasties. And you could do it in percutaneous or open surgical, there was no problem. But the risk of skiving was always there. So, in that did not change between these two, except that the instrument became smaller in size, less bulkier, and much better computation. So, time used to be less. Then came Major X, which was, it was in 2016, they got the uh, FDA approval and it is a fully automatic robotic arm which is fixed uh, <coughs> to the table on a patient mounted track utilized by previous models. <coughs> this added the intraoperative planning also. Earlier it was a preoperative planning and used to identify during the surgery. So this way you could actually get rid of skiving because skiving was a big problem. And then 
stealth was added to it and it became much more accurate. Okay. So, there are other systems also, but Medtronic being a giant, other systems were totally obliterated by them. Rosa came, Rosa got the approval in 2016. It was a freestanding robotic spinal surgical navigation system and it had a merging of both pre-operative and intra-operative pictures and they also upgraded to 2019 in Rosa 1 spine system. And now they have got with Zimmer and they have integrated the system like a stealth Maser X. Then Globus, I see Globus somewhere here. Yeah. So, this system came, actually this system came before the Maser X came and they got approval in 2017. It is a floor mounted and uh, allows for real time visualization of instruments positioning. It can also incorporate intraoperative and this is another very commonly used system in this uh, in the world. Then there is a system called Cubis spine. Now this came from Korea. Uh, you can see from the picture that it is actually a table which is not on the patient's side. It is uh, on the floor. It has a robotic arm and optical tracking system. And I think they have taken from different different thing and put it together. And this is actually also used for uh, orthopedic procedures. Then there is a brain lab were lost in the market. Brain lab had one of the best brain navigation system, but they did not concentrate on this. So, with this circuit they came and uh, again this is a uh, approval was 2019. It has a robotic arm and they used to intraoperative CT that arrow and they linked with that. Then there is a system which is used in China, Tiwavi and uh, as you can see, I can see that Tiwavi is almost like uh, uh, taken few things from uh, Metronic system and then added a computer brain there and made this uh, robotic arm which is a uh, floor mounted. So there are lots of things in pre-operative CT is required, not required based on mount, instrument tracking, K wire required. Now the present ones do not require K wire both Globus and uh, major X stealth and clinical applications have gone quite uh, far. Accuracy, everything is more than 96 percent, 97 percent. There are limitations. Chinese one is not approved by FDA. Now, if you look at the outcome, definitely there is an improved accuracy. So, that is no longer a debate, it is accurate or not. All system, all robotic thing compared to freehand or other assisted is accurate. Then comes to radiation outcome. Now, outcome is still not greatly changed, realistically not very, very greatly changed and we do not expect it to change because even a surgeon who uses 2D fluoroscope takes pain to get the right positioning and everything with experience. So, to expect that something miracle will change, it will not change. Radiation has definitely changed to the patient, uh, to the operating room staff. For the patient, you are doing a intraoperative MRI or intraoperative CT or fluoroscopy and preoperative CT. So, radiation is going to be there for the patient. I do not know when the patient is going to sue for us, to sue to all of us, but there will be a legal case sometime or other because there is a considerable radiation. We have kept it as the you know elephant in the room, nobody wants to talk about it. Then comes augmented reality. I do not think this machine which uh, Bharat has got is going to be there after 4 years. It will change. I am 100 percent sure it will change. That big box will not be there. And what will be there, I will show you the last. Now, in augment, in reality, augmented reality in spine surgery has already entered. Already in last 3-4 years, a lot of work has been going on. On cadaver level, it has already entered. There are three types of augmented reality called virtual reality, mixed reality and augmented reality. People who are younger who have played all those PlayStation will know, our generation has no idea. Okay? It is a virtual reality is being going to be used for or is being used for teaching purposes. Augmented reality is going to be in the clinical purpose. And this is one of the slides showing augmented reality that you are going to know where to go you are seeing in your eyes with the special goggles or whatever and you will see where to go, there will be no problem. My experience 
32 cases. I had to give up because of two reasons. Every case had a consumable cost of 1.75 lakhs. The benefit was not proportionate. So it had to be given up. My biggest fear was a skiving and I used several cases I had to use CM and that and I found there is a lot of skiving there that has been taken care with the present system. And of course preparation was time consuming. This, those were the days when these frames were used. These were planned and you can see planned and the done part, planned and the done part, planned and the done part. So accuracy is not a problem. But what is going to happen is this. And another five years, the younger generation will wipe out the older generation because they will be much more comfortable with the augmented reality where the machines will disappear, you will be wearing a special goggles, you will be seeing the picture where you are going. You don't have to look at the screen there and this is going to be the future. Thank you.